Hi, I'm Colin Snook. I'm a research fellow at the University of Southampton. Our research group provides formal modelling tools for analysing system requirements. In this presentation, I'll give you an overview of our tools and our current research and how it could fit with XTUML, which is oriented more towards the design stages. Validating requirements with formal models. Our current research project is called High Class. <clears throat> the High Class project uh, aims to improve model-driven development methods for high integrity avionics systems. The project is funded by the Aerospace Technology Institute and includes 13 industrial partners and three universities. Within High Class, the University of Southampton is improving the UMLB and Event B modeling tools to support requirements validation safety and security analysis, and interfacing with other modeling tools such as XTML. So XTML is a very nice modeling language for describing designs. It's executable, which allows us to test models before coding. And this means that we can think about the design at a higher level of abstraction. But what about the requirements? How does the thing we're designing fit into a system? The modeling that I describe is focused on analyzing system level requirements down as far as the early stages of architectural design. We would like to be able to model the system so that we can analyze the requirements at a higher level of abstraction without worrying about how the system will be implemented. Initially, we would even like to abstract away from some of the more detailed requirements so that we can focus on the critical properties of the system, like safety and security. By abstracting away from the details, we can think clearly about these critical properties and make sure we model them correctly. Then we can add the details incrementally in refinements, verifying at each step that we have not violated the previous more abstract models. In doing so, we will begin to introduce the components involved in the system and their requirements hence moving towards an architectural design. Event B is a formal modeling language that supports this approach. It's based on set theory with predicate logic and guarded events that change the state of the variables. Critical properties are expressed as invariants that each event must preserve. The Rodo modeling platform contains automatic theorem provers that attempt to prove this preservation and that the model is well defined. If the provers do not succeed, the Proby model checker can be used to search for a counterexample. This interactive modeling and verification of critical properties leads to a deeper understanding of the system. A fully proven model is guaranteed to be consistent, but this does not ensure that it models what we want from the real system. It's equally important to validate the model's behavior, and we can do this by animating it. I'll return to validation in more detail later. UMLB provides a diagrammatic modeling interface for event B consisting of class diagrams and state machines. It is UML-like, but is designed to fit well with event B. So it has some different semantics from UML. For example, there is no concept of external trigger events or run to completion in state machines. Transitions are simply fired spontaneously when their guards are true. The diagrams automatically generate event B for verification using theorem provers. For validation, state machines can be animated using the Pro-B model checker. This is a, an example UMLB class diagram and its generated event B. The class diagram generates data elements and their properties expressed as in axioms and invariants. The class user contains a security invariant and the tools will attempt to prove that it is maintained by the class methods. 
I showed this example in more detail at last year's XTUML days, so if you're interested, please find my slides on the XTUML 2019 website. This is an example of a UML, simple UML based state machine, and it's generated event B. The state machine generates data elements to represent state, as well as events to model the behavior of the transitions. Here, a state machine is being animated and a violation of a state invariant has been detected by the probe B model checker. BDD, or Behavior Driven Development, uses scenarios that illustrate the requirements to drive the development of a system. We have adapted BDD for formal modeling of requirements. Our behavior driven formal modeling uses scenarios at different levels of abstraction to match the refinements in our models. To make the scenarios precise, we suggest inventing a suitable domain specific language which is based on the Cucumber language based, used in Deep BDD, but made more specific to address the problem domain of the system. Once we've chosen an initial abstraction, we can invent correspondingly abstract scenarios that describe its behavior. For each refinement, we then add the appropriate details into the abstract scenarios to obtain scenarios suitable for that level of refinement. We found that it can be advantageous to refine the scenarios before the model so that the behavior drives the formal modeling. To support this approach, we have developed a scenario checker tool for animating the model based on the Pro B model checker's animation mode. The scenario checker can then check that the model behaves in accordance with the scenario. Other animation visualization tools, such as the UMLB state machine animation, can be used in conjunction with the scenario checker to help visualize the state. Here's an example of an abstract and refined scenario written in our Cucumber based DSL for an entry control system. At the abstract level, the scenario simply focuses on whether or not a user is allowed access. The refined scenario replaces high level requirements with the behavior of the components that achieve the desired security. This screenshot shows the model being validated using the scenario checker to replay a previously recorded scenario. The upper windows show a visualization of the state of the system using B-Motion Studio, which is part of the B Pro B, and the UMLB state machine animator. The lower windows are the scenario checker control and state checker panel views. <coughs> the scenario checker allows you to manually step through the animation of a scenario, displaying important state variables at each step and automatically executing any internal events that represent the execution of a controller response. The scenario can be saved at any point and then played back. During playback, any deviations of the important state variables are highlighted. At any point during playback, the scenario checker can be changed to record mode in order to create a different scenario from that point onwards. Using these model validation tools, we can perform a kind of requirements acceptance test before moving to the design and implementation phases. Clearly, it is much better to address any misconceptions in requirements at this stage rather than waiting until the system is implemented. Next section describes our current work in the high class project where we are developing methods for security analysis and threat identification to meet the needs of avionics standards such as ED202 and ED203. STPA, or Systems Theoretic Process Analysis, 
provides a framework for conducting safety hazard analysis by focusing on the potential effects that could result if the system does not behave as it should. STPA SEC adapts STPA for security threat analysis. We've developed a formal modeling process to use STPA SEC in conjunction with UMLB and EventB. Firstly, we describe the main purpose of the system as this helps to identify potential security losses. Then for each system action, the STPA table identifies potential threats that could arise if the action is carried out or is not carried out or is carried out at the wrong time or in the wrong order. In parallel, we develop an event B model as a formalization of the system. The event B provides more rigor to the STPA by checking that the analysis is accurate. The synergy is bi-directional so STPA guides the formal modelling, but also the formal modelling informs the ver and verifies the STPA. In some cases, we have found that the formal models can reveal misunderstandings in the STPA analysis. Then we have to revise our approach to the system, rework the analysis and modify the models. In order to address the identified threats, Design decisions are introduced by adding components that take responsibility for addressing the threats. To model the introduction of new components, we make a refinement of our event to be model. We can now repeat the STPA process, focusing on the requirements of a particular subcomponent at a time. This analysis process flows down requirements to components, at the same time providing an explanation and evidence suitable for certification. Note that systems often involve human users, so our analysis and models may need to incorporate assumptions about user behaviours. There are several important traceability issues going on here. Requirements are being developed and handed down as derived responsibilities to components. STPA provides an important justification for design decisions, which can be provided as an explanation of the design. And the formal models provide precision and evidence of the threats identified by the STPA. One of our partners in high class, Ultran, are developing a tool infrastructure for modeling based development, which we'll use to provide traceability. At this point, through behavior driven scenarios or analysis driven STPA or a combination of both, we've refined our models to the point where we have identified all of the components that will make up our system. And in the process, we've allocated requirements to them. We now need to progress towards more detailed design and implementation, which is not the forte of UMLB and Event B. We have worked on various code generation tools for C, Ada and Spark, which may be sufficient for simpler systems. But for more complex systems consisting of many hierarchical components, it may be better to switch to a model-based design tool such as XTUML. UMLB models could then be used to generate an initial XTUML model, which is then further developed by hand towards an executable version. We'll investigate this step during the next year and report back at XTUML days 2021. So to summarize, abstract modeling gives clarity to critical properties while refinements ensure they are maintained as we move towards a system design. Verification using theorem provers backed up by model checking is a powerful way to gain a deeper understanding of the system. But validation is equally important and tools to record and replace scenarios at different levels of abstraction ensure we develop the right system. 
hazard and security analysis methods such as STPA and STPA-SEC work hand in hand with formal models to provide evidence that we are developing a safe and secure system. A transformation to an executable design language is needed in order to realize the system. If you think any of these formal systems modeling might be of interest, please visit our new website at uml-b.org. Here you will find a guide to downloading and installing the tools, as well as pages describing our current research directions and collaborations with several different industrial partners. Our research is very much focused towards practical adoption of formal modeling, so we're always keen to hear from new industrial partners. So thank you for listening. I hope some of you will answer my questions in the, that you, if you spotted them in the slides, or perhaps you ask me a question instead. <laughs>